testimony, it was deleted about the wound. Was that revealed later, and has Jackie talked about it? The testimony was deleted until 1971. Uh, that transcript was then declassified, I quote it in the book, and uh, the testimony appears to indicate that she believes the back of her husband's head was shot off. So that's no different than what the Dallas doctor said, for reasons I do not understand, although Jackie wanted to talk about the wounds, Earl Warren and his colleagues didn't want us to read what she had to say, but that all got resolved in Dallas Police Motorcycle Police Escort location left rear of President's limo was splattered with pink rain and blood spray that covered his uniform, helmet, and bike, which he said he had to wipe off. JFK's limo stops momentarily or slows down to almost a complete stop according to a number of witnesses. Numerous eyewitnesses testified that the limo slowed down to almost a complete stop. We see this in other film footage, but for some reason, popular copies of the Sapruda film do not show the limbo slowing or almost stopping. What we see in other films from the left side of JFK is the limbo slowing down enough for the motorcycle cops to catch up and for a secret service agent to run up and get aboard after the fatal shot. Both secret servant agents, shielded by a what is perhaps a bulletproof windshield, both look back. The driver looks until after the fatal shot hits JFK. The movement of the people in the limo are of a forward motion, like what happens when someone pushes on the brake suddenly. After the fatal shot from the knoll, while the driver is looking back to see the hit, right after this, Governor Connolly starting to turn back towards his wife, but right after the shot, his head slams into the shield as though he's either hit from another shot from behind, or because the car did stop, or almost did. The Connollys then take cover by getting down in their seats realizing that they were being shot at. Miss Kennedy then, I heard her say, uh, my God, I've got his brains in my hand. I heard uh, what I thought was a rifle shot. I immediately reacted by turning to look over my right shoulder because that's where the sound came from. I didn't see anything out of the ordinary and was in the process of turning to look over my left shoulder when I felt a blow in the middle of my back as if someone had hit me with a doubled up fist about like that. The blow was of, uh, of such force that it bent me over and I immediately saw that I was uh, covered with blood. And I knew I'd been hit. And I said, oh my God, they're gonna kill us all. And I heard uh, another shot. 
that there was a flat shot almost like that. And immediately, I saw blood and brain tissue all over the back of the limousine. There was a time they thought the same bullet that hit Kennedy went through him, right? Well, let me ask you this. Do you think a bullet that went through the president's neck could hang there in air between the two seats while John turned to the right, turned to the left, and came back? That's what I asked the Warren Commission. I said, I don't believe a bullet could do that. That bullet, same bullet, did not hit both of them. The Warren Commission says what? Well, they you know, they wanted to argue with me, but... They said the same bullet, right? But they weren't in the car. No, they weren't. Reported. Just how the FBI went about reconstructing what did happen is interesting. The most important evidence is a roll of amateur movie film taken by a Dallas dress shop owner, Abraham Zapruder. Which is never the shown. The film moves through a movie camera at a certain speed. The passage of time in every movement on the film can be measured. Until That's much one later. Of the most disputed questions, the speed the president's car was taking as the shot was all those was a show. And it averaged 11.2 miles per hour. aired. Publicly. Two other vital questions have been in dispute. How many shots were fired and where they came from? The commission concludes that three shots were fired, all of them from this sixth floor window in the Texas School Book Depository, and that none came from anywhere else. Gordon Arnold is certain of what he saw. The training that I had just finished, they were shooting live ammunition on us. And when a bullet goes past your ear and your eardrum, feels like it's coming out the other side of your head. It's close. That's why I thought I was shot. There's no doubt in my mind that I was there. Also, you don't see the uh, shield that protected the uh, driver in the other passenger, Secret Serviceman, who are driving this. And it seems like there's also a seat missing where uh, the governor and his wife were sitting, too. And there was a shield here that you see in the original Z Zapruder film. So, is this actually the same vehicle that Dan Rather says that this is the vehicle that Kennedy was in? Or is this a different vehicle? <laughs> When he was struck, he was thrown to the rear and to the left, indicating a shot from the grassy knoll. The knowledge that we had been lied to scared me. Yeah, I felt if anybody knew what I knew, that I'd be in a great deal of danger. So I didn't tell anybody. I quietly worked on the film for years. The more evidence that I was able to develop in the film, for instance, the timing of the shots, when the first shot was fired, uh, which was a lot earlier than the Warren Commission had told us, at a point when Oswald had even up in that window, could not have fired the shot, until the most frightening, horrifying physical aspects, the nature of the wounds to the president's head, which are visible in some frames after the head shot, much clearer than anything the public has ever been allowed to see. Living with that became a horror, trying to keep that afraid of being discovered that I knew that. That's, that's what frightened me the most.